pressure, go ahead, raise your hand, get my attention. Coach. Thanks, Zach. Uh, shoot, excited to be back in the facility with our team today. Um, you know, coming off a really tough, disappointing loss Friday night. Um, you know, a lot, lot, lot of lessons to be learned uh, from Friday night, um, you know, in areas of execution, uh, you know, some of the details and uh, in valuing the football. Uh, that, that, that being said, uh, could not be more optimistic about um, the foundation that, that this team has, uh, has built. Uh, when you turn on the film, we got a group that plays with, with uncommon effort, um, you know, is, is buying into their coaching, uh, you know, playing their tails off for one another. Um, you know, we continue to develop depth throughout our roster. You know, Noah Taylor with the block punt, you know, graduate transfer from Cornell has only been on campus since June and showing up in a big way on special teams. There's a lot of things to be excited about, a lot of things to celebrate. Um, excited about the direction that our offensive line is going and our running backs in terms of establishing a run game. Um, you know, that this this opportunity coming off a tough loss is is an opportunity for this group to to respond to adversity and prove because of it. And uh, you know, fully confident that that our team will will do just that. Um, great opportunity to get back in the facility this morning with our team, uh, learn from from Friday night. Uh, our guys, you know, similar to our routine from last year, are, are out of the facility here for a few hours before they return this evening for uh, some brief position meetings, initial install in Eastern Illinois, and then uh, and then a brief practice. Uh, this group um, understands what's in front of us. Um, uh, a very quality, uh, well-coached team uh, that's coming off a win at Indiana State. Uh, Coach Wilkerson has done an incredible job. First year going two and nine. Uh, you know, last year eight and three football team. Uh, very easily could have won ten games last year. A couple of really close losses. Uh, th 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 this is a very well coached operation um, with talent. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, you know, uh, experienced quarterback returning that was a all, all conference player. Uh, very talented running back. Um, you know, some skill out on the perimeter. Big offensive line uh, defensively. You know, did did a great job uh, against teams last year. You know, I think uh, gave up less than 20 points per game defensively last season. Uh, you know, th this is uh, th 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 this is a team that uh, you know is is on an upward trend. Very well coached, and at the end of the day, you know, we need to understand our opponent, study our opponent, respect our opponent, and put all of our effort and intention into being at our best. Um, excited for the opportunity that we're going to have on on Saturday night. Um, you know, we 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 have made a decision. Uh, you know, at the quarterback to uh, position to, um, you know, give give give, give Jack Lausch uh, the start against Eastern Illinois. Um, I'm excited for Jack. I'm excited for our football team. Uh, incredibly appreciative of. Uh, of Mike Wright and the teammate that he is and the effort that he's put into being a part of this team. Mike will continue to be an integral piece of everything that we're doing. Um, you know, talk about a young man that's high character, um, a great teammate, you know, everything that you want in a Northwestern Wildcat. Um, I, I know Mike and I'm very confident in the fact that Mike will will handle this, um, you know, like, like the high character young man that he is. He'll prepare the same way. He'll stay ready uh, and, and also excited for, for Jack Lausch and his opportunity to um, you know, have his first college start and uh, lead this offense. Coach Barnes, it was like at the end of last season, I mean, all season really, Andrew Saka has just been like getting better and better and really hit the ground running through two games. Right now he's leading the Big Ten in quarterback pressures. Can you just talk about like his trajectory and, and the work in the offseason and, and where you think he's headed? Yeah, I mean, special young man, incredibly talented. Um, you know, I remember a conversation I had with Anto when when I first got here 20 months ago. Uh, was still in his first year here, trying to figure things out. And you know, the one thing I'm really proud of Anto is, you know, the the first thing we talked about is just carving out a role, and what does his skill set possess that would allow him to do that early on in his career. And at the end of the day, that was just really developing as, as a pass rusher. And the partnership between Anto and, and Coach Smith has been really fun to watch. And, and where I'm proud of Anto is, 
he's taken that role and now built off of it and really started to to hone his skill set to be a, a very effective every down defensive lineman. Uh, but you know, cannot um, it, the 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 way that we play defense, uh, that front four has to be disruptive, has to affect the quarterback, and uh, you know he's certainly uh, continuing to trend in the right direction, and uh, just just really a proud of all the work that he's put in and uh, the coaching that he's taken from Coach Smith. What do you want to see from Jack that you haven't seen the first two games from? Yeah, you know, it's it's just uh, assignment sound, you know, just 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 executing our our, our offense, um, and then you know, valuing the football. You know, I mean that that that's something for for us to be at our best. Um, you know, we're, we're we're we need to to win the turnover margin. It's something that we emphasize in terms of valuing the football, and uh, you know that that's something that uh, at the end of the day. Uh, at the quarterback position, you're going to have the ball in your hand on every single play. Uh, your your ultimate responsibility is to protect and value the football, and uh, you know it, it's going to be uh, you know the ultimate charge for Jack to to lead this group, uh, to execute within the offense, and make sure that we're valuing the football. How much of this decision was you maybe informing Coach Lujan of this, or was this more of a conversation? Everything that we do as a, as a program, you know, like as I've said before, Matt. Um, sometimes I get questions about this being my program. It's 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 not mine. You know, I I'm just fortunate enough to occupy uh, the the position in that chair right now. I mean, everything that we do as a staff is is a collaborative nature. At the end of the day, all decisions, you know, um, ultimately fall on me, and I'll be involved with. Um, but the, it, it was a collaborative conversation and, and something that I, I know Coach Luhan, Luhan and I are in complete alignment on. And then have you seen, you made a change at offensive coordinator to decision to bring in him this season. Haven't seen necessarily the positive production, but do you see the right changes underlying that from last year? Do you see a positive direction on the offense? I, I, I'm, I'm incredibly confident in the direction that we're going. You know, I, it's it's the same conversation that, you know, I, I had with our team this morning, um, as competitors, we can get so tied into, um, you know, being attached to uh, the performance and, and, and the result. And, and then you ride this wave, Matt, of, you know, when things are going well, uh, it's all sunshine and roses. And when things aren't going well, it's, it's hit the panic button. And at the end of the day, the things that we need to evaluate is, you know, um, our intent, our effort, our processes, things that we can control. And, and, and don't get me wrong, in all three phases of the game, there are plenty of things as a football team, uh, as a coaching staff, myself, you know, that, that we can improve on in all those areas. But I see improvement. Um, I, I see guys, you know, gaining a certain understanding. You know, we, we talked about what are the things we're doing well right now offensively. Well, I, I, I'm abundantly confident in the direction that our running game is going and some of the things that we've been able to establish on the ground. Uh, I, I'm really proud of the way that the ball has come out on time. You know, Mike, Mike has done a really good job of being timely with the, with the football. Our offensive line has done a good job of protecting them. That's something that needs to continue. Um, and, and then there's there's just plenty of things that that, that we can clean up. But um, you know, I, I, some, sometimes when you go through adversity and things don't go as well as you necessarily want them to early on, it, it can actually bode well for you in the long term because you have to fully evaluate. You're forced to fully evaluate everything. And the thing I'm most confident in, in terms of our entire staff, including Coach Luhan, uh, Coach Creighton, Coach McGargle, is you know low ego, high output guys that are going to be. Um, you know, take ownership and evaluate everything and continue to improve. And uh, I'm excited about the foundation and the trend. We, we just, at the end of the day, need to execute at a higher level and in turn, you know, moving the ball into points and, and, and need to uh, eradicate, you know, some of the self-inflicted wounds that put us behind the chains, especially against, you know, an aggressive defense like Duke that can, can be really detrimental to your, to your overall performance. Coach, on Friday night, you said you weren't considering making a swap. What in the last few days on tape made you think that this was the right move to make at this time? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I, I try and really pride myself on, on not being, um, let me boldly state this. I am highly competitive and, like, emotionally intense. Like, I, I know that. I think that, that, that those are great qualities. You also have to guard yourself against some of those things. 
Um, and, and, and I do not like making decisions when I'm in an emotional state. So, you know, the statements that I made on Friday night, I, I stand behind it in the moment. Um, I, I wasn't going to speak to those types of decisions when I hadn't had a chance to evaluate the film and process and really evaluate what was in the best interest of the team. But having a chance to look at the film, evaluate where we're at, I, I think the decision that we're going with uh, is in the best interest of our football team right now. How do you characterize the growth that you've seen from Jack since you've arrived on campus uh, to the point where he's now making his first career start this weekend? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, gosh, um, intentional, uh, resilient, gritty. Uh, you, you know, J Jack, when he arrived on campus, great athlete, great competitor, incredible, just, you know, intangibles that you look for in the quarterback position. Uh, but but not a ready-made Big Ten quarterback, and and he's done such a great job of just developing in so many different areas, um, from throwing from the pocket uh, to some of the things that he can do, uh, you know, uh, throwing the ball on the run and, and just uh, being more consistent with those types of things with his decision making. But the growth that we've seen out of Jack Lausch, um, you know, throughout last fall, but specifically from January on, has been something that leads us to have a lot of optimism for uh, not only this week but but for the future. Coach, with you going through it last year, what has your conversations and almost advice been like to Coach Lujan, now just coming from the F FCS to now the Power Four level where everyone's just a little bit faster, a little bit stronger? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think I think first off, it's trust yourself. You know, I, I think the ultimate mistake you can make as a head coach is, like, mandating things um, from a standpoint of just coming in and just because the result wasn't what you looked for, you know, snap to judgment rather uh, just being curious of, of, of our process and the decisions that were made. Uh, but, you know, Zach, Zach is a phenomenal play caller, uh, a phenomenal game planner, an incredible collaborator. Um, and, you know, the, the ultimate challenge in coming into a new role, yes, it's the Big Ten, yes, it's a higher level of football, but it's also just understanding and really getting a, a full grasp of uh, our personnel and what our guys are best at and, and, and putting those guy, guys in those situations and, and how to reach that group most effectively. But what I have abundance of confidence in right now is that group is, is improving. Um, the O-line is really starting to catch their stride. Uh, things that we're seeing out of the running back room are really exciting. Our guys in the tight end room and the wide receiver room are attacking the football. Some of the catches we've seen out of Bryce Kurtz the last couple weeks, A.J. Henning, a huge third down conversion where he makes a great catch. Thomas Gordon, against zero coverage pressure. Mike puts in a good spot. Thomas goes up and attacks. It makes an unbelievable play. Like There's so many things to build off of. And just because the overall results aren't there yet doesn't mean that there's not good things happening. And just, you know, tr tr trust in himself. You know, he got himself here for a good reason. He's damn good at what he does. And just continue to trust the process. Uh, Coach, obviously, Jack's first career start coming up this weekend. Last week, you guys really struggled with third and longs. You were 3 of 16 on third down, average of 8.1 yards to get to the sticks. How do you make sure that you don't get him in a lot of those third and long situations? Yeah, I, I mean, no, number one, uh, the things that we can like absolutely control are pre-snap and post-snap penalties, right? It's it's false starts that we, we have to eradicate. You know, we, we can't be starting first and fifteen. Uh, we have a couple of holding calls that pop up on first down that put us in first and 20 situations. Uh, there, there's technique things there that can be improved upon. Uh, you know, where I give our guys credit, you know, some of those are showing up because they are straining and, and, and just so prideful about executing their job. But technically, we can clean some of those things up. Uh, those are things that we can control. And then, you know, uh, again, you know, trusting – some of the throws in our quick game on early downs, and again, continuing to lean on our run game, which has been producing. Uh, it, we all know this, much easier to call offense from second and six than, than second and 16. What did you see on the last play of the game? Because it looked like Frank had a pretty good shot at that ball. Yeah, my, my, Mike did a good job of giving him a chance, you know, extended the play. Um, you know, Duke did some good things in those types of scenarios, you know, potential situation where they're bringing zero and trying to get the ball out now, playing off man. Uh, they end up rushing three, dropping eight. There's really no windows to throw the ball. Mike extends the play, gives Frank a chance. Um, Frank did a great job of keeping himself available. 
we didn't uh, end up converting, but a, a credit to everyone involved on that play. Um, you know, we, we had a chance there at the end of the game. Was it close or did somebody get a handle? No, it was, it, it was close. I mean, it was maximum effort by Frank. He did everything he possibly could, but there, there, there was an opportunity there. We we anticipate Nick being available for us. Coach, after two weeks, how comfortable, how much are you enjoying the new technologies, the, the headsets, the tablets, two minute timeout, all that? How do you feel like that's changed the game, elevated it? Or yeah, I, I I I think the two minute warning is great. Um, you know, from a clock management standpoint, it. Uh, it, it, it boils things down a little bit for you in terms of managing the game and managing the clock. Um, I, I think the more in college football that we can move to a model where we are in sync with the NFL, I think that's I think that's great for our players. I think it's great for the experience. I think it's great for the young men that have an opportunity to transition to the NFL. The headset technology, still figuring out how to best maximize that. But um, you know, where the college game is different, you know, you see some tempo in the NFL. Um, obviously see a, a ton of it in college football. So it's unique with only having one headset on the field defensively. Um, and, and then, you know, the, the, the sideline tablets, um, we got to continue to maximize those to, to make, you know, appropriate adjustments. Uh, I, I won't name any specifics, but there was one specific adjustment that was made at halftime based on what we were seeing on the tablet that uh, played a critical role in some second half success. And then, Coach, you talked about your own run game, but also your run defense has been great all year. Eastern Illinois averages just 2.6 yards a carry. What do you guys need to do to maintain the success you've had in the trenches thus far? Yeah, you know, it, it sounds super cliche, but ju just continue to play with great fundamentals and great technique. I think our D-line right now is doing a great job of constricting gaps and, and uh, you know, uh, getting off of blocks, block destruction is such a critical piece of that. Um, the linebackers have a very sound understanding of what we're doing in terms of asking in our run fits. We need to continue to tackle well. Uh, the the one thing that you know I think will be critical as we continue to evolve as a defense is understanding that um, you know when you see some of these operations uh, that that are RPO based that you saw against Duke when they started to get the sense that they were really struggling to run the ball consistently. Well, the, the way that they're going to try and protect against your pass rush is force your front seven to defend a run frame and poke the ball into the mesh and then find windows behind it. I think continuing to help our guys understand how we're being attacked, um, understand the intent to the call, to hold off some of those windows. And sometimes against those RPO teams, you know, Tim McGargle will cringe hearing me say this, but sometimes you have to be willing occasionally based on the intent of the call to give up a four or five yard game in the run game to hold off a window that can be an explosive play in the RPO game. And on the D-line, do you have injury updates for Carmine Bastone or Brennan Flakes? Really optimistic about Brennan's return. Um, not, not sure if it'll be this week, but you know, cautiously optimistic that we'll, we'll have Flakes back. Carmine. Um, optimistic that we'll have him back here sooner than later, uh, but still uncertain on what that looks like for this week. Coach, one thing with Mike sometimes was just trying to do too much. How do you make sure that Jack understands that, hey, it's okay to throw the ball away to just take a one-yard gain and not every play has to be an explosive? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I want to give Mike his props. I, you know, I, 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 I think, you know, there were some things that Mike did really well. The, the ball out on time. Um, some of the, some of the production we've seen offensively was was Mike doing things with his legs, extending plays. Some of the throws that we saw to Duke on Friday night and to Thomas Gordon week one. Um, I think it's just a very delicate balance of of what is um, an extended play that can lead to production and really weighing the risk reward and just making sure at the end of the day that the non-negotiable is we can't put the ball in danger. You know, uh, we, we don't want to punt. Punts are okay every now and then, um, especially if we've picked up a first few few first downs and we're starting to flip the field. Um, but you know, turning the ball over is is not winning football. Coach, you mentioned in your opener that uh, Eastern Illinois has got a pretty experienced quarterback, Pierce Holly, second team All OVC last season. What have you seen from him on film that you want your defense to focus on stopping? He's just got really strong command of what they're trying to do offensively. I think he makes really sound decisions in the RPO game. Uh, if he's comfortable in the pocket, I, I think he is, uh, you know, very talented and comfortable as a pocket passer and can get his playmakers the ball. Um, 
know, specifically one guy uh, in the wide receiver room that they're going to take some shots to that can be really dangerous and, uh, you know, downfield passing game. Uh, he, he's someone we're going to have to do a great job of disguising our coverages, forcing him to process post-snap and affect him in the pocket because, you know, if, he, if he's thrown in a clean pocket throughout the course of Saturday night, he, he will cause you a, a, t a ton of issues. Coach, even with uh, Jack not winning the quarterback battle immediately, how do you see him sort of stay engaged and support Mike in these first two weeks? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think I think Jack just continued to be who he's always been since since he's arrived. Um, you know, I, I won't share details of of our conversation when you know we notified both him and Mike about our decision uh, coming out of camp. But what I will tell you is, he was, um, you know, uh, like. Yeah, he, he he was angry. Not 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 anyone in particular, but he's such a competitor. Like he wanted the opportunity to start. Um, you could tell he was emotional about it. Like it wasn't news that he wanted to hear, but he took full ownership and said, "Coach, I I, I know I need to improve. I know I need to get better, and I'm I'm going to make sure that I stay ready." And I think the ultimate compliment to Jack Lausch in terms of who he is as a person is the natural human tendency in a situation like that is to see regression before you see the build back up. Just because it's hard news to hear and it's not the result that you were looking for. We saw Jack Lausch immediately continue to improve after that, that, that news was broken to him. And I think that's a credit to his character, his competitive demeanor, and just who he is as a young man. Jack's currently a redshirt sophomore. Do you think at all, how much of the future, you know, the chance that if this works out, he could start 30 some games for you? How much does that weigh into this decision? Not one bit. Uh, solely, this decision is solely based on, you know, what we feel is in the best interest of the 111 guys, you know, on this team and what's in our be best interest going into week three. Coach, um, this week freshmen start to move back on campus. What's your message to them who have not really ever been in a college before? And what are you most excited about getting students back on campus to see the new stadium and just to be a part of this program going forward? Ah, uh, so so excited. I, I I appreciate the question. I mean, it's 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 conversations we've had in here a lot, but like, again, the thing that you know just gets me really passionate and enthused is how special this place is. Um, opportunity to receive a world-class education and be engaged in Big Ten athletics. You know, we've seen it at Welsh Ryan. We have saw it at the old Ryan Field last year. You know, I, I go back to the Purdue game from last season. And, and now for an opportunity for our students to engage on a, you know, I mean, literally a, not, not just on campus, but on the lakefront venue is something that I, I can't wait for uh, uh, our, our students to be back in full force and uh, see, see the wild side at its best. Teach the fight song at Wildcat Welcome again. You know, uh, I, no, knowing my uh, my uh, rhythm and my voice, I don't know if you want me teaching anyone the fight song, but I, I, I will uh, I, I will get an opportunity to to spend time with with those first years and can't wait to just engage that group and and hopefully uh, you know call them to to be in, as engaged with our football program and our our other sports here at Northwestern as as they want to be because it, at the end of the day when our students show up in full force it makes a huge huge impact Anything else for coach? Awesome. Right. thanks everyone thanks everyone